And here we are on the Windows 10 desktop. Beloved as it is, and certainly I think it's one of the better operating systems that Microsoft have put out, certainly a big upgrade over Windows 8, but despite that, market share is of course dropping because Microsoft will be pulling support for Windows 10 at uh, the latter part of this year, October 2025 to be precise. So Windows 11 has improved significantly since its first iteration, at least in my personal opinion, and uh, Microsoft have improved the uh, performance as well as adding a lot of new features. But there are a lot of users who are now considering switching to Linux, which is actually a pretty good call. Windows uh, is no longer the only way that you can play many games, thanks to a lot of efforts from not just the community, but also Valve as well, of course. But some folks will perhaps want to stick to Windows 10, and therefore that's what we have here, Windows 10 LTSC, or Long-Term Servicing Channel, to give you the full name. So in this video then, what I want to do is run through what the differences are between a standard installation of Windows 10, for example, Home or Professional, versus LTSC, and then show you guys some of the setup and perhaps answer a couple of questions. Now, as you can see here, I'm actually installing Windows 10 LTSC, and the general GUI and setup procedure is almost identical to what you would expect from a home or professional installation of Windows 10. Now, there are some differences, however, for Windows LTSC. Uh, LTSC does away with some of the bundled software, including but not limited to the telemetry slash spying that Microsoft incorporates into the home version. So perhaps that could be a big benefit to you. UWP and Microsoft Store are not uh, available by default, there's no Cortana, and a bunch of other stuff is simply not there. Now, you can install some of the stuff manually, for example, for UWP support and Xbox, but again, you would need to install that manually, so it is something to be cognizant of. Uh, but this does give you a lot of flexibility. Now, I want to talk to you guys about how the updates function. So again, Windows 10 Standard Edition, so that would be home and professional, in October of this year, they will no longer be receiving official support from Microsoft, including security patches. Now, if you're only doing gaming and it's on its own, you know, kind of drive and it's not a big deal to you, then you might just say, eh, who cares? But for many users, not having security updates and other system critical stuff is obviously, well, kind of important. And that's where LTSC comes into play. So if you have the LTSC 2019 version, the support for this, the extended support will end in 2029. But if you have the 2021 version at the start of 2020, uh, 32 that is when the extended support period will end now i do want to mention that, that this is support so these are not going to be additional features and that's really important to be aware of so for example if you're expecting microsoft to start in uh, you know, updating new versions of direct storage for Windows 10 and that type of stuff, that is simply not going to happen. This is going to be more for security updates, or if there's like a mission critical bug, then obviously you will have that. So let's talk about, well, direct storage and perhaps some of the drawbacks. Now, when I was testing this, and we'll show some more gameplay in just a moment, RTX 5090s, for example, will install absolutely fine with the latest drivers. I was running Cyberpunk 2077 with uh, multi-frame generation enabled. And, of course, you get a very similar performance to a standard edition version of Windows 10. In fact, it might be a little bit uh, more performance simply because you don't have some of the bloatware. But that would depend on your system configuration, for example. With that said, things may change in the future. So again, direct storage is part and parcel of Windows uh, 11. So if there is something that gets incorporated to Windows 11 for future games that is required, then you may have issues with it with Windows 10. But obviously, it's very difficult to know what's going to happen in the future. And I don't think this is going to be happening anytime soon. Obviously, you know, you're not going to get a games developer who are just going to create a game without any way of supporting Windows 10, at least in the foreseeable future. So my personal opinion is if you just want the latest and greatest stuff, you can, of course, go with Windows 11. Uh, but if you do instead want to have a very stable system 
and you don't want things to change around a bit, you don't want to move to Windows 11, perhaps you're looking for a more of a production environment or a Plex server, those are perhaps other reasons you might uh, consider LTSC, then this might be something that you would want to dabble in. Now, I decided for my particular installation to throw this onto a fairly small SATA SSD. Now, this is not going to be the final installation for this LTSC version, but I wanted to run this as kind of a test and just uh, basically get ready for another system that I'm going to be building in the not too distant future. So I just wanted to get a handle on LTSC and kind of do this more for a proof of concept as I get ready to build an entire new system. And I just didn't want to start messing around with partitions or pull out uh, uh, NVMe drives to make this happen. But again, you can see that the installation goes exactly how you would expect. Now, I do want to mention that this video is brought to you by WhoKeys, and I did actually grab my uh, key for Windows 10 LTSC. Now, WhoKeys do have Windows 11 keys as well, so if you do prefer to go to Windows 11, including the LTSC version, then of course you can do that. Uh, you can also just search for Windows 10 LTSC or just type in Windows 10 in the search bar, or you can find a link to it in the video description. And and of course, that would be another way to do this. They also have legitimate keys for Microsoft Office, games, and a whole bunch of other stuff. And I do want to stress that these guys are legitimate. I actually do use them on a personal basis. I've built multiple rigs at this point where I've ever used it for windows or microsoft office and i've also had friends use uh who keys and all of us have bought the keys on our own personal accounts and there have been absolutely no problems the keys have just worked first time you go through the checkout process and within just a couple of minutes after purchasing you get given a uh, email of course and that would contain your uh, license key but it will also allow you to check them out on the website themselves once you've logged in and created an account so either way you can get the key one of the two ways so at this point i decided to install windows 10 ltsc without the key and then add it later because of course that is an option and i thought well you know once i've got the network i will install it and there's actually where kind of something funny happened so i actually get to the desktop and then in put the key in and then realize oh i actually i haven't connected to the network so that was kind of funny so i had to reconnect to the network and then uh, after I'd put the key in and then Windows activated for me. But uh, yeah, goes to show you that uh, you do need to kind of have uh, Windows online to be able to activate and use a key. So that was pretty great. Uh, so obviously I hadn't managed to set up a Wi-Fi network, but that was pretty easy. Once that was done, of course, you would then be able to install all of the latest NVIDIA drivers. And at this point, we had no watermark. Full functionality of the operating system could download any updates that we wanted all was good and uh, we can play some games or i guess we could do some work stuff as well but let's face it games now like i said at the beginning um with my rtx 5019 of course it would also work with other graphics cards whether they're amd or nvidia you can simply install the latest drivers and then from there you will have full access to do pretty much anything you would like now i will mention that hardware accelerated gpu scheduling is almost certainly off by default so you can just simply search for graphics in the windows control panel and then of course you can just enable that this will improve performance typically in games but furthermore multi-frame generation for DLSS will not be applicable <laughs> unless you enable that. So uh, again, you want to enable that unless you want to go with FSR frame generation, which I don't see why you would if you have an RTX 50 capable card. And of course, the game plays exactly how you would expect. It's buttery smooth with path tracing, DLSS transformer model, and it looks absolutely stunning. I'm still around maybe halfway through this game, so I need to finish it off. But uh, so far, it's absolutely fantastic. At the rate I'm <laughs> playing through it, though, it's probably going to be um, probably going to be uh, the next Cyberpunk that's released at that point. And Dead Space as well, I tested out. Again, absolutely no problem with all of the visuals cranked to max. Uh, the game plays absolutely perfectly. Um, for my testing of Ratchet and Clank, which I haven't grabbed footage of, it also ran okay. Um, but of course, direct storage may not be using GPU decompression, depending. Now, what I want to mention, and getting back to the whole Xbox 
and uh, Game Pass and that type of stuff. Now, what you can do, although I didn't do it for my particular installation because I, again, was just testing things out and I didn't want to install all of the Xbox stuff for my particular installation, but I will leave a link to a guide in the video description. But what you can do is you can use PowerShell commands and it's pretty easy and straightforward. So you simply download a couple of things online. You need to download the VC++ V14 uh, desktop framework package. And you will also need to download the Microsoft UI Xami point two point seven, and then you need to kind of extract a, a one specific file from that, and then you install with the add app x package command. Again, this would be in PowerShell. It's really not too difficult. Again, the guide, which you can see on screen, runs you through how to do this, but I didn't want to do it for my particular installation because I just didn't want all of the Xbox stuff for this installation. But once you've done that, then you can install WinGet and then you can run the command to allow, allow you to start installing all of the Xbox uh, functionality if you do want all of those overlays. But of course, that would totally be up to you. So there you have it, guys. I wanted to discuss on Windows 10 LTSC because I think while Windows 11 has improved significantly, and of course there is the LTSC version for Windows 11 as well, which does have the benefits of like, you know, no telemetry and so on. Some, some folks just simply prefer Windows 10. So I want to mention this because uh, I was speaking to a couple of people recently and they just said they plain prefer Windows 10. And while personally I come up most things from the production and gaming standpoint, I know if you're doing like development or certain environments, you don't really want to worry about, you know, kind of like a, an evolving operating system. You just want something really stable, especially if you're doing more like media serving. I know that Plex is not exactly ideal perhaps in a Windows environment at all times, but still for some folks, it's just simple and easy. With that said, guys, thanks again to Hookies for sponsoring the video and I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.